You know, let's, let's talk specifically about this um, silicon carbide 300 kilowatt, 800 volt inverter. So again, it's a traction inverter. It's meant to provide the propulsion force of a vehicle. Um, and yeah, 300 kilowatts is a good start. Uh, that's, uh, you know, in the ballpark, if you will, for uh, your base level EVs. I'm kind of a performance enthusiast, so I like that it's, uh, you know, 300 plus, if you will. Um, that said, um, it's clear to me by looking at it that it's not solely um, intended for um, traction drives it, with a different um, uh, positioning system, if you will. Instead of using the resolver to measure the angular position of the rotor in a, in a traction motor, you could probably very easily change that front end so that it monitored 50 or 60 hertz and use it then for a stationary power inverter application. Is that a, a good statement? I mean, I don't want to you know, pigeonhole this into just traction drives if, if it's not solely intended for that. So what, what can you say about um, alternate purposes and your intentions behind this reference to design being used for those purposes? Any thoughts? Yeah, I, I would say certainly that that the the three phase inverter can also be used as a rectifier, and then with that coupled to piece together yet another three phase inverter uh, to be a motor drive, right? So you can you can think about it as an active front end uh, in certain applications uh, to to turn drive a motor. Uh, there are a number of other applications on the industrial side, and, and you're exactly right uh, with a few tweaks and. Um, iterations on, on the software and how you operate the system, uh, you can easily start to test uh, in some of these other applications in your laboratory very easily. Yeah, Ty, Ty myself, Jonathan, I think we've all been in the in industry for, for quite a long time. Um, one of the things you'll realize is that, you know, this technology actually gets reused everywhere. So these concepts, which are maybe an industrial, like an energy storage type of application, um, you know, get reused in automotive, which, you know, I used to work on server power and before that working on telecom stuff. A lot of the concepts that we see in auto today are really just build ons on top of these markets. Right. Um, so technology just continues to evolve. It's kind of the, the materials, uh, the material science, the silicon carbide, these wide band gap materials, which has enabled an explosion of different types of uh, applications. Yes, um, it's an exciting time to to live. You know, it's as a developer watching silicon carbide evolve. You know, for years we could just get the diodes, and everyone wanted the switches. And then you know, it was like the holy grail. And then suddenly Tesla put it in a traction inverter, and it kind of pushed it over the hill. And now it's to gaining steam. So, um, you know, been watching Wolf Speed, you know, Cree prior to that, and uh, it's really exciting to see it finally manifest into real products for me personally. So. Um, yeah, again, thanks for pulling that together. Now, one of the other backgrounds I have is model-based design. Um, my world was mostly, you know, in simulation with MATLAB and Simulink and things like that. And and I saw in the presentation that, you know, there's at least a, an accommodation for code uh, like that. Um, the uh, field-oriented control is a good example. These are things that could be intellectual property for your clients as they develop unique attributes. And, you know, I'll, I'll kind of give an example. Um, a lot of folks think about um, a permanent magnet synchronous machine motor, three-phase drive, you know, hook an inverter to it. Oh, look, it spins. You're ready to go to production uh, when, in fact, there's a lot of tuning involved, a lot of optimization. Um, so, you know, what can you talk about with regard to how your clients, uh, maybe Monroe's clients, uh, could actually use this as a platform for developing their own intellectual property? You know, I gave a couple examples. Maybe you can um, toss out some tools or methodologies that you've used for tuning. Maybe even, um, you know, have some thoughts about specific examples. Uh, so, I don't know. Um, again, you know, model-based development, customers developing their own stuff. Here's a wonderful hardware platform to do so. It looks as though you may be giving them at least a good head start in software. And, and you know, again, so it's kind of an open topic here regarding 
uh, your clients in developing. Um, you want to want to want to take that on here? <laughs> uh, I can take I, a couple of. Uh, uh, yep, I'll I'll make a couple points here. So. The inverter reference design, um, which you can see, uh, you know, throughout the video, is really a programmable platform. So at the heart of it is the silicon carbide, uh, but it's also being driven by Texas Instruments, you know, uh, microcontrollers, which are programmable, and they uh, then drive these gate drivers, which are, you know, uh, efficiently driving these wide band gate uh, modules. Um, the nice thing about the microcontroller is that it, it runs a high-speed loop. And the reference design actually allows you to hook up to any motor. So um, in fact, one of the things that we did here was we did basically inductive load testing. And then we, after that, which inductive load testing is basically kind of testing the power stage open loop. Um, you're not really getting any kind of feedback for rotor position or anything. Um, we actually moved this into a um, motor emulator or a hardware and loop simulator, which we can show you pictures of later. Uh, and in that, we put our own, uh, a real motor model into it. And so using this platform, one of the really cool things is that you can tweak it for whatever motor that you want to run. And you can test it to whatever standard, whether it be a, like a worldwide light harmonized um, passenger vehicle standard or, or a China standard or whatever. Um, the platform really allows for IP development, intellectual property development. You can have, you know, using TI's basic, um, you know, control algorithm. Um, together with you know, your own IP, you can make it do virtually anything that you want to any motor that you really wanted. All right, nice. That's exactly what I was hoping to hear. Um, so I can I can add something as well. That wonderful. You know, Please yeah, do. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So just speaking from the the power module side and the power semiconductor, um, you, you mentioned model based kind of development and simulation. Um, one thing that we really like. Uh, as a company is uh, the Plex simulation environment from Plexum. Um, so what this is, is a uh, electrothermal uh, simulation environment where we fully characterize the power module, um, the cold plate solution, TIM, so the entire power stack up thermal management solution. Um, and we can model that and we can model the electrical performance of the semiconductor um, so customers can then take this model and run a system level uh, simulation for their particular operating points and understand, you know, the bounds of the performance that they could get out of not only our modules, but this particular reference design. So that's that's one thing that we really like to push. And that's um, a tool that we use and we provide all of those uh, models and information so that our customers can use um, as well to then work uh, in coordination with uh, what Mark said in terms of the control side. Um, they also have that electrothermal uh, simulation side. 